Big news, DJI has removed geofencing in the United States for all of their drones. The DJI Flip, which we all know about already, has been officially launched. A new mystery DJI Leica surface from Quadro News on X. New information regarding the Palisades drone incident has been revealed. Insta360 has launched their Flow Pro 2 smartphone gimbal. And finally, a drone light show over the Detroit River. Let's get into the drone news. DJI has just removed geofencing, which means you could fly your drone pretty much over the White House if you wanted, but obviously please do not do that. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's get a breakdown of what actually geofencing is and how it affects everyone, including micro drone pilots that fly DJI hardware. Geofencing is a safety feature built into all DJI drones that prevents pilots from taking off in restricted areas, such as military facilities or airports without direct permission from DJI, AKA the red zones. This does not give you permission to fly your drone in an irresponsible manner, Full stop. You as a pilot must still abide by the rules and exercise caution when flying. If you wanted to fly in an area like that, such as a red zone, you would need special permission from the proper authorities and would have to submit an application for approval to DJI. So previously this could take days, if not weeks in some cases to hear back from them, which would hinder responsible pilots who are doing this properly and just need to get up in the air right away for a time critical mission. So what does DJI removing geofencing really look like for your average drone pilot? Well, like I mentioned in the past, you had red and blue zones and the red zones could take days or weeks to potentially get permission to fly in. And then the blue zone would be a self unlock process where you, as long as your drone was connected to the internet, you would be able to self unlock and assume responsibility for flying in that area. Essentially what's happened now is all of those red zones have gone away and everything is now essentially a self unlock. There's a warning, there's a checklist that you go through to make sure that you understand the process and you understand the liability and risk as drone piloting command for flying in an area that is potentially higher risk. If you're gonna fly near the White House, you need to understand that that's what the risks are, that you are busting a TFR or you are entering restricted airspace with this drone. You need to get permission, but DJI is not the one that's gonna manage that permission for you. So why is DJI doing this now? In a blog post, DJI stated that removing geofencing would put control and responsibility back into the operator's hands. So now it is the pilot in command's responsibility to know when and how the drone flight is going to be conducted. They also stated in the same post that the system had been in place since 2013 and originally it started as a means to nurture safe flying practices while drone laws were still being originally developed. They just weren't that robust back then. So the reality is that the geofencing system was meant to set up some guardrails for brand new pilots back when the regulations didn't exist. It was a wild west back in 2013 for drones and we really didn't know where drones could or couldn't fly. Now we have really strong rules and regulations and frameworks for where drones can be. So DJI doesn't need to be the man in the middle when it comes to how you decide when and where you're going to fly. As we're saying, the responsibility has got to come back to the pilot. The pilot needs to be responsible educated and informed about where they are and are not able to fly. We've talked about this a lot on our podcast. We've talked about it in other YouTube videos. You can check back in the catalog or look in the links below. There are episodes where we go into a lot of detail about how the geofencing system works. Essentially, it's gonna be the same, so that information is still very relevant. The only thing that is now changing is the lack of a red zone. Removing this feature will streamline the process for professional and recreational pilots that know what they're doing and for creators who are under tight operational deadlines. So if you've got to get in the air when the light is right, there's only so much time you have to get that done. So we got to talk about the potential for misuse in this situation. Now that the third party locking system has been taken away and it's coming back to the pilot's responsibility, if the pilot doesn't take the effort to educate themselves and to learn about the system and learn about the aviation laws that are relevant to their drone, there is a chance that we're going to see some initial abuse and further misuse of this. The reality is that your average consumer can now walk into Best Buy, pick up a drone, and that drone will not prevent them from flying in somewhere, but it will at least inform them that they're flying in an area that they shouldn't be. This is a, an inform and educate move and allowing the end user to make the decision based on that information instead of stopping them without really educating them as to why. In the past, it'd be something called an enhanced warning zone or an unlock zone, but it wouldn't really say why it's an enhanced unlock zone or anything like that. It would just stop you and make you go through a bunch of steps to do it. Now it's gonna slow you down in the process, but it's going to at least tell you why, because it'll have the FAA number of the TFR, or it'll have the FAA airspace, or something that will give you further information 
that you would then take into before you fly to find out why is this drone telling me, hey, you should pay attention and not necessarily go out and fly in this airspace. Do you think this is a good thing that DJI just did or is it a massive amount of potential problems? Let us know. Earlier this week, DJI released the flip and it's pretty much everything that Jasper LNs and Quadra News leaked and it's all come true. This new foldable drone comes in at $419 US for the standard combo and it packs a ton of features, so let's break it down. It's got 4K video at up to 60 frames a second with a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor that can also take up to 48 megapixel photos, fly up to 31 minutes, it has AI subject tracking just like the Neo and a new carbon fiber support structure. Additionally, it's got support for D-Log-M and it's all coming in under 250 grams, so it is considered a micro drone. We're curious how this new design is gonna hold up against crash in the long term and while the Neo had a similar design with the enclosed prop guards this is the first time we've seen a bicycle spoke like design coming from DJI that also folds there's a lot of moving parts in this thing it's compatible with the RC2 which is the controller with the built-in screen the RCN3 which is the newest basic controller from DJI but at this point there is no mention at all if this thing is compatible with the DJI FPV controller or the goggles it also has voice control and AI subject tracking making it a drone that you'll be able to easily throw in your backpack and take with you out on an adventure and because it's a sub 250 gram drone in Canada you have a lot more freedoms about where you can and can't take this drone without having a pilot certificate so just like it's a great time to buy a new drone now is more than ever a great time to get into drones and you've got a ton more options if you're looking to get the most out of your drone make sure you head on over to check out our courses at coastaldrone.co as a side note apparently people are pretty stoked on the quality of the trailer there's fire sticks waterfalls dad jokes and the drone even does a backflip in the end even though i don't think it can actually flip so let's see what happens with any potential firmware updates down the road just when you thought it was safe, even though the flip has just launched, the leaks don't stop. Another mysterious photo surfaced from the infamous leaker Quadro News on X. Could this be the Osmo 360 that was leaked back in October? After all, it kind of looks like it, and both Quadro News and Jasper Ellens have both been pretty spot on when it comes to their sources. DJI has definitely been trying to expand their market with the Hover Air X1 as their last target with the Flip and now GoPro with their Action Series. So are they coming after Insta360 to secure market dominance across the board? That could be a little far-fetched, but we're always stoked to see what DJI is gonna put out next. And of course, more competition and more products means better for us consumers. Personally, of course, I'm just hoping for more dad jokes in the next launch video. Let us know in the comments what you think this could be for a leak and could Kudos if your guess ends up being true. So the FBI shared photos of the drone that caused the firefighting plane in California to land while fighting the Palisades fires. In a press conference on Monday, Los Angeles County Sheriff Robert Luna shared that three people had been arrested in two separate events in regards to flying drones over the wildfires in the Palisades area of Los Angeles. And while the FBI is still investigating the drone that hit the CL-415 water bomber in Los Angeles last week, they did release photos of what appears to be a DJI Mini 3 drone that collided with the aircraft. And we're not gonna speculate why the drone was in the air right now, but all pilots, regardless of the type of drone, need to stay clear of the skies when there is a wildfire suppression activities going on. As we've spoken about recently and ongoing, flying a drone over a wildfire is a federal offense punishable by up to 12 months in prison or a potential $75,000 fine. Please. Stay out of the skies and let the professionals do their jobs to keep us all safe. If you want to learn more about this incident, we did make a video about this recently that dives further into what the future of the drone space potentially looks like after something like this happens. After a few teases throughout the last week, Insta360 has launched their Flow 2 Pro compact smartphone gimbal with AI capabilities. You kind of thought it was going to be another camera. I mean, just look at it in the teaser. Just, just look at that thing. It features three axis stabilization, subject tracking with the help of AI, of course, a built-in selfie stick, and up to 10 hours of runtime. It's going to retail for $159 US and it's available to purchase on their website, apparently right now. And if you're looking to create drone related content, smartphone gimbals can actually be an invaluable tool to allow you to get smooth and professional shots on the ground to augment your really smooth and cool drone footage. Residents of Windsor, Ontario were able to witness a drone show over the Detroit River last Saturday night in celebration of the Detroit Lions football playoff. The show featured over 400 drones and lit up the sky with various elements relating to football and the coexistence of our two nations. It went on for 15 minutes and left audience members amazed by the possibility of what drones could do 
and how seamless the motions were. There wasn't just a drone show though, there was also a variety of things including an official flag raising and free hot chocolate and coffee, and I mean who doesn't like that? By the looks of it, it's pretty clear that fans obviously enjoyed the show. And shows like this require an immense amount of preparation and coordination, not to mention the technical and artistic aspect of it, so hats off to the team that's pulled it off. If you want to learn more about the drone light shows, check out our podcast where we talk with Dan and Travis from Pixel Sky Animations just a few weeks ago. So that's it for this week. Be sure to catch our podcast this Sunday at 10 a.m. where we'll teach you how to edit a hyperlapse to create that stunning video that you've been dreaming of. In the meantime, check out last week's episode where we went through the entire planning process for getting ready to fly that drone hyperlapse. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Our audience is growing. We really appreciate it, but you know what? Over 80% of you guys are not subscribers yet, and we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next week. Thanks again.